So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and take uh, the navigation mesh uh, .csv file that we just created and uh, copy it and put it into the you know wherever your either your Python or your C++ code is going to run from. Um, so I'm going to place it there and I'm going to overwrite the existing file. Um, and once that is done, I'm going to you know go back into my code. Um, forgive me for all the, you know, all the comments and stuff. I've been using this for a lot of testing. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and update uh, some information such as, um, so the plane that I'm using right now or, you know, the environment that we created was environment um, dot egg. Um, so once that updation is done, um, and since we copied our nav mesh, oh, before that, let me just show you one more thing. So you can see um, the function that is being called here, called init path find, and this is a function that is there in the AI behaviors class. And what it does is it pretty much uh, accepts the CSV file that we created, and it's going to create uh, a two-dimensional array of all the nodes. And this is what is going to be referenced by the A star algorithm uh, to do the path finding. So, so that's done. I'm going to go ahead and run this and see what happens. Oh my god, that's a lot of code. So as it you know, builds. Um, I had mentioned to you guys earlier about how uh, this is compatible with. Oh, wait. So, okay. So, whoa, that's a big box. Um, okay. So, I think I might have scaled uh, the environment wrong. So, let me just go back and fix that. Okay, so that's why. Um, so you saw a huge box there. It's because I had specified this, you know, scale as six for some previous testing that I did. So what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, make sure you don't do this because all the scale of the models and the environment uh, that you created in 3D Studio Max, you know, has to be maintained um, so that you know the mesh, uh, you know, is still intact with the 3D environment that you created. So all the three egg files that you created have to be, um, I mean, you know, the, 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 the egg file that is the main environment has to have the same scale, in which case, you know, it should be one. And also make sure that the environment is placed at uh, the origin. Um, right, and here when I say plane, uh, don't get confused, it's, it's the environment that we created, you know, the, the plane and the box environment um, that we are loading here. So, yeah, so once I have made that change, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to run it again. And hopefully this time we have uh, a simple, decent looking environment. So, I'm going to let it compile. There you go. So, that's done. And there you go. So, there are no textures on it right now. But anyway, it makes, it's pretty straightforward. You have the plane and then you have the, you know, the box right there. And you can see how, you know, it kind of avoids the box, you know, as it pursues uh, the red triangle, which is what I'm controlling. And the blue triangle is the the AI character, which is pursuing and at the same time is also doing pathfinding. Now, if I go out, what happens is, you know, it does not recognize it because now the target is not within uh, any of the nodes. And if I go back in, it recalculates the optimal path to the target and, you know, 
reaches there. Again, if I go inside an obstacle, it's going to be a problem again. Um, so, also one other thing that you should note is that in case when you first load up the AI character and it happens to be, you know, uh, uh, in the environment which does not have a node, then the pathfinding is not going to start, it's not going to begin. No matter, uh, you know, where, even if you change the position of the target. So you need to make sure that, uh, you know, the character when it is loaded up, it is not being loaded onto, you know, an obstacle. So, yeah, and just to kind of show you how the nodes are arranged on this mesh, I'm going to switch to uh, top view. The box is not that visible right now because it's not textured. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I have a hotkey which brings up um, all the nodes that we created. So those are all the yellow, you know, spheres that you see there. Um, are the nodes that uh, we created using the mesh gen and then uh, the blue triangle you know based on the a star is um, computing the optimal path based on um, you know um, the location of these nodes now you can see there's a significant frame rate drop here and um, it's not because of pathfinding it's purely because of the 2500 models that we are uh, you know kind of throwing out in the screen and this is the reason why uh, it's slowing down I mean it was visible before we actually um, brought up these fears that the frame rates were steady and uh, you know perfect I'm just gonna you know add um, like we have a, a line draw function also, which you can toggle just to see how pathfinding is working. So you can see how you know each time it is, each time the target changes its position, it recalculates the path. Now you don't need to do that always. If you just want like uh, pathfinding between two static objects, you can do that. It's less computationally expensive. This is more expensive. But yeah, that's uh, so that's pathfinding uh, based on the mesh that we created. And just to, I'll give one last example showing uh, a more complicated environment uh, which has, you know, implemented uh, or which has used the mesh gen. So just waiting for it to load up. So this is um, a more 3D environment or a more complicated 3D environment we created. I'm just going to hide the sky dome because we don't need that. Okay, so, so this is a slightly more complicated, you know, uh, 3D environment that we created. And as you can see, um, I'm going to go ahead and select the mesh that we created for this, hide unselected, there you go. So what we did is pretty much the same process. I have I have the entire plane initially and then I go ahead and add obstacles and then I go about removing the faces which fall directly beneath those obstacles and I get the mesh like this. And then the same procedure is followed. Um, first you create the egg file of the entire environment and then you create the entire uh, plane with all the faces and then one without uh, the faces which fall below the obstacles and that's pretty much it. So before I end this tutorial just one last thing um, I wanted to tell you guys about which was uh, if you're using Maya or Blender um, the process is same um, and you uh, but there is one extra step that needs to be done uh, because currently our mesh generator is uh, going to take triangles and uh, from the egg file and that's how it is in 3d studio max but in Maya and blender I believe uh, it is in quads so the extra step that you need to do is 
um, you need to kind of subdivide those into triangles and this is pretty straightforward and it's available in the forums also and we'll make it available in the in our on our website it's the simple straightforward uh, command that you need to pass which takes in the egg file and you know calculates the or decomposes the quads into triangles and once you create this new egg file um, and you pass that to our mesh gen tool and you should be good to go uh, it's yeah it's as straightforward as that so that ends the mesh generation tutorial if you have further doubts please post your queries in the forums or you can contact us via our um, website so thank you thank you for listening to the tutorial bye